So I'll jump right into it. Big reveal last episode. Paul is alive. That he is. What's the deal Wait, with what? Paul? <laughs> oh, he is? Oh, my God. Spoiler alert for me. No, uh, well, there's there's a lot in store with him, and he's up to a lot, but we can't really talk too much about it because, it, it you know, but... but um, it is heartbreaking. Let, let's just say that when you think you've figured it out, it's probably going to twist on you again, so... You know. Could you talk a little bit about how his reappearance will affect the characters in the show, especially Becca and, and Michael? Well, yeah, I mean, it, obviously it affects them in a big very, way. Yeah, very tough because <laughs> we can't really reveal <laughs> um, now, where Michael, it's going. Of course, Michael, of course, doesn't know he's alive because he's off wherever he's off, you know, where he is. Yes. Um, but it, it does bring up a lot of... of uh, of issues for Becca because all of a sudden the husband she thought was dead is alive and for whatever reason hasn't contacted her in the last 10 years. And, and what is his involvement in the kidnapping of her son? You know, because it's much bigger, obviously. Michael is kept in the dark in a big, big way, but there is a whole plot um, that is completely mind blowing. Which starts to layer in tonight yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. and, and also. Um, you know, there's the triangle. I mean, there's the fact that she's sort of re reconnected with Giancarlo, who she had an affair with while she was married to, to Paul. So all of a sudden you have that sort of aspect going on, too. And he thought he was dead, and maybe there was hope for them, and then just when... He thinks there's hope. Oh, Aww. he's alive. <laughs> but but why would you do that to him? Corrupt. But he seems to be a bad guy. He's so corrupt. Maybe, maybe so maybe, the maybe that's a... Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and could you tease a little bit of what else is we can expect this season? I heard you talk that there might be a villain that we have already met. Can you expand on that? Well, there is a, there is a big villain behind everything. And, um, and it's pretty likely that you've already met that villain. And... You just don't know it yet. Um, Him or her. That's what I said. Yes, that, yes. I said that villain. Oh, excellent. Yes, yes. <laughs> I was I was very carefully gender unspecific. Oh, right. <laughs> um, yeah. But what do you think appeals to fans of the show? What, what do you think is so powerful about Missing? I think, I think the level of intrigue and the fact that it's a thriller for television. I mean, I think when I read the feedback online and, and you look at sort of our numbers, people stay throughout the episode. No one drops off. So I think they're hanging on, so almost like edge of your seat uh, at times, uh, to see what's coming next. And It's only going to go faster. And it, and it really starts to accelerate from episode four on. And I think um, I think that's I think that's fresh for TV audiences. Uh, for me, you only have ten episodes this season. Is that is that a challenge as writers to, to write a, a, you know a story through compared to twenty well, rating? No, for me it was a great pleasure because you know I, uh, this is the first time I've done television, so having ten hours to tell a story is like is like having five times as much as I usually do. You know, so for me it was fantastic. It was a great luxury to be able to do that. But I think having that framework, uh, knowing where you're, you're going to start and end, is uh, is a luxury that not a lot of shows have. If you are expecting you that you're going to get a back nine, and you you know you don't know, but you know we're we're capped even if we uh, come back at 13 episodes a season, so um, more like a cable model. So uh, we'll always be able to plan out a good, intriguing story. And compared to what you thought the show was going to be and what it ended up to be, what was the most surprising thing about Missing? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, I mean, I think the most surprising thing for me was how certain characters sort of asserted themselves as we went forward with the project. You know, we had great we had the thing sort of broken and we knew where we were headed, but there are characters that started out as mine. There's one character, for example, that started out not even with a name, just with, you know, a, a generic character description who winds up being a huge part of the show because once we got going and she was there and she was great and, you know, her chemistry with everybody else was really good and she just sort of grew. And that for me was... I think the most surprising yeah. and, and exciting thing about it. I think that's a great point. I, 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 it's you know, it's interesting because what was really exciting and surprising for me was um, finding all these amazing actors all over Europe. Not not like I didn't think, but we really found extraordinary actors. Some actors that we were scripted to kill off, and then we thought. 
we're not no. We no. can't kill that. We can't kill that guy. We can't we can't kill in episode two, you know, our guy who plays Lucier, Joaquin de Almeida. He's not going anywhere and how you sort of you know, and it's a real tribute, I think, to all of the partners in this process, both in the creative team and in our production team, that there's like a flexibility. There was a real flexibility in the show. No, nobody was rigid or it had, it was, what is the best discovery? There was tons of discovery. And it was yeah. the, it was the complete cooperation to let the discovery lead rather than sometimes, you know, the... Some of it is, is structure of what you think it should be was just that like, great, fantastic. Let's roll with it. Let's put that in. Yeah. I can't. I, I, you know, when we pitched to ABC, we said we wanted to shoot a show in Europe. We wanted to shoot in different cities. Um, we wanted to do something no one had ever done. And they said yes. And then we were faced with the challenge of doing it. And I'm stunned that we managed to pull it off. And, and uh, that surprised me. That surprised me. And you know, and the fact. And I think everyone was surprised that we came in on schedule and under budget. So uh, I think if you can plan ahead, it can work. Yeah. And one final question for you. The show is called Missing. So if you could have any fictional character come and find you, which one would it be? Any if you if character? you were missing. Yeah. From our show? From, our show? From any show, any time, anywhere, oh, any no, fictional. No question, I'd pick Becca Winston. No question. <laughs> hmm. I think maybe I'd pick George Clooney. He's I mean, not fictional. Oh, fictional. Oh. <laughs> oh fictional. Any character that you... Him coming to find you is fictional, but... Maybe <laughs> Giancarlo. Who doesn't want to be found by a hot Italian? <clears throat> maybe team uh, Becca up with uh, Jason Bourne. They there could probably go. get something done. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic.